Hello and welcome to HealthySeminars.com. I'm your host and moderator. Um, and today we're going to have a lecture, a webinar. The topic is Enhancing Fertility for Couples Over 35, Specific Recommendations on Nutrient Supplementation for Women and Men. And our speaker is Dr. Mark Sklar. And I want to give a big thank you out to Fairhaven. Um, they have sponsored the, today's webinar. Um, a little background. Um, we run um, the Integrated Fertility Symposium since 2015, so five years straight. And in 2020, we had a council because of COVID and Fairhaven was planned to be there. And I use a lot of their products and I know the team there. And they said, hey, um, we were planned to be at the IFS. We had a, a fee rather than giving it back to us. Um, maybe we can sponsor something for educational for all the people that wanted to come and anybody that wanted to come. And so they organized this. They got uh, in touch with Mark Sklar. Mark is a colleague and a good friend of mine. Um, we actually, just to let you know, he's the president of the American Board of Oriental Reproductive Medicine. He's a fertility expert, um, Chinese medicine practitioner. And um, Mark and I know each other well, as in when we have to talk about difficult cases, we'll often call each other up and, and talk shop. And then when COVID happened, we have to buy equipment. We call each other up. What are you buying for this supply and how are you protecting your tables with this? So I know Mark really well, both on a professional level, that's how we met, and also on a friendship level. And I'm also a fellow of the American um, Board of Oriental Reproductive Medicine. That's the ABRM.org. So I'm just really excited to have this because Fairhaven was kind enough to sponsor this and, and got asked uh, Mark Sklar to put together an educational webinar um, for the community um, on how they can um, optimize both egg and sperm quality through nutritional supplements. Now, I just want to do a very brief um, um, housekeeping here and just, I mean, it's really brief and then we'll bring up our disclaimer slide. I just want to let you know that to find the replay for this, you just go to healthyseminars.com and if you click on the resource page, I'm going to just take you, this is the resource page, here's June 2020. You'll see on June 22nd, you can click that and that will take you to this page. And this is where you are going to find the replay. So if you're looking for the recording to watch this again, this is where you come. Um, it's not up right now because we're streaming live. And if you want the handouts for them today, then contact Fairhaven, Fairhaven, um, Fairhaven Health directly as well. And they can provide you the handouts that Mark has put together for this lecture. And I do want to let you know that if you come to this page at the very bottom, there is a special offer that Fairhaven's offering um, to the webinar attendees. So just read this and find out what they're offering. They have a special that's on until July 15, 2020. They have a great affiliate referral program as well. So I encourage you to check out this page, which is healthyseminars.com forward slash Fairhaven. If you can bring up the disclaimer slide, that'd be greatly appreciated. Um, I actually got in introduced to Fairhaven when I started using pregnancy tests and ovulation strip tests um, rather than the real expensive ones that you can get at your local drugstores, um, they were selling them um, at the fraction of the cost. So it was nice that I could pass these on to my patients and they don't have to bake the bake, break the bank to be able to do all these ovulation tests. And, um, and they have a great um, affiliate program as well. So do check out um, Fairhaven's website. They've got great products and great services. Our disclaimer today, um, just to remind you, this is for educational purposes only. This is not medical advice. This should not be interpreted as medical advice. If you have a health condition, please seek out a health care provider. Thank you. All right, let's bring up your slides, uh, Mark. If you have questions, please post them in the chat room. I will moderate those for Mark. He's going to speak for 40, 45 minutes, and then we'll go through the Q&A um, at the end of, of this talk. So uh, without any further ado, uh, Mark, please take it away. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, thank you, uh, Fairhaven Health, for inviting me to talk on this topic. Um, and thanks for everybody watching and, and uh you know, who came to join and found this, this topic um, important and valuable for them to take out some time in your day. So I do appreciate that. Um, you know, in my practice, we use a lot of Chinese herbs um, and Chinese medicine, obviously, but also a lot of supplements, um, nutritional supplements and vitamins and so forth. And um, I've always had an ongoing conversation with um, uh, 
with multiple fellows of the uh, ABRM on this topic because you know some have a bigger affinity for using Chinese herbs over um, new, uh, nutritional supplements, and some have more for nutritional supplements over Chinese herbs. And you know, I don't think that there's a uh, personally think that there's a right or wrong when it comes to that. I just think that each patient needs to be looked at individually based on their specific needs at that moment in time and deciding, you know, what might be best suited for that patient um, and that condition. And so um, I've always found uh, an affinity for vitamins and supplements that we tend to use quite a bit in our practice. And, and I'm, I've always been looking for supplements that are effective, but obviously also have some good research behind it um, that I can count on and um, also make things affordable for patients as well. So, you know, we're always introduced to new things, but I think it's always important for us to come back to the point of what's important, what's going to work, um, what's going to be cost effective for our patients to get the results that we all want to see. So that's how we put together this uh, presentation um, for all of you. Um, for those who don't know a little bit about myself, um, I run a clinic called Reproductive Wellness here in San Diego, California, um, specialize in reproductive health and infertility. Um, and I won't uh, spend too much time reading my, my bio and, and so forth. Um, but I think the most important thing that stands out is that I am, uh, I've been since the inception of the American Board of Oriental Reproductive Medicine. I have sat on their board with, with the exception of, a, of two years where I took a break. Um, and I am now the current president of ABORM and happy to support and uh, our community and this profession and really excited to be here with all of you today. So let's get on with it, right? So today we're gonna cover some main things, but I'm gonna focus on some key areas. Um, you know, common issues seen in female patients and how to address them. Um, we're not going to spend too much time on the common areas, but I'm going to cover some key points that I think are important for all of us to be re to remind ourselves about it. Um, but really, as the title says, we're going to really spend our key points and most of our time talking about the nutrients and specific recommendations as it relates to some of these key nutrients. These are just a couple that we'll be going over. Ionisetol, CoQ10, melatonin, and a slew of antioxidants. Um, I always feel when I talk to patients that cervical mucus is really important. So we'll spend a little bit of time on cervical mucus and what potentially patients can, um, can do uh, to support that piece and what we can do to support them. And then no uh, presentation when we talk about fertility and reproductive health is uh, complete if we don't address the male side of things. So um, I am gonna also spend a little bit of time talking about the common issues for male factor and how to address those specifically, again, as it relates to um, nutrients and uh, supplementation. So some common issues that I think we all see and that we all want to address first and foremost with patients, if, if someone comes in to the office, you know, as we, in the, in the fertility world, we tend to see women who are older and um, or have been told that they have egg quality issues. This seems to be such a big point, a big conversation that we have with patients. Um, I think it's probably overdone a little bit, especially for our younger patients. Um, when we're talking about egg quality, um, they just harp on this point and really zone in on it. Um, and so, you know, that's a key piece that we need to address with our patients. Now, one aspect of it when we're addressing egg quality with patients is to, I think, keep them grounded and keep their feet on the ground about it and, um, you know, support them emotionally when it comes to that. But also, what can we do to support egg, quali egg quality ongoingly? Um, and some of that's really going to go have to do with oxidative stress and how we can uh, manage that piece as well for them. Um, cycle regulation, you know, as we all know in Chinese medicine, I don't know how many who are joining us today are Chinese medicine uh, doctors, um, but I imagine a good piece of the, 
of those of you watching today, the viewers are. And from our world, really, we spend so much time on this piece with patients because it's so important, right? If they have an irregular cycle, short or long or none at all, obviously fertility and uh, reproductive function is gonna be impaired and compromised. And so making sure that our patients have a healthy functioning um, and regular menstrual cycle is of utmost importance. And for me, this supersedes everything else, right? Because without having a regular menstrual cycle, as we all know, then it's gonna be very difficult to support egg quality. It's gonna be very difficult to maintain hormonal balance, which is the third point here. So making sure that we focus on uh, cycle regulation, I often think that we sometimes get lost um, focusing on these little um, topics, so to speak. You know, if someone comes in and says, oh, you know, I really wanna focus on egg quality or I have cysts or endometriosis or something like that. I feel like sometimes those, those um, Western biomedical terms are what we tend to fixate on and focus on. And we tend to ignore some of the other things that have so much importance, like regulating a menstrual cycle. Um, and then for me, a key piece that I do, that I work with with all my patients is running lab work, making sure that I have a good understanding for what their hormones look like. Um, because I don't know about all of you, but I find that either they have not had enough testing done um, or it's been done at the wrong times of the cycle or they've been told everything looks fine, but they actually haven't seen it themselves. And we can come up with all sorts of stories around this piece. Um, but I really like to make sure that I'm running full um, hormone panels for our patients, really going in depth for them. Um, because I find that this is, is ignored. And this only helps me when I'm working with them clinically in deciding what nutrients that I want to start to incorporate in their plan. Um, and so this is why I spend a lot of time with, in the beginning when I do a workup with patients is really working on hormone um, lab testing and getting a good understanding for what is going on there. The... Um, I think patients really also appreciate this piece because they don't get a lot of attention with this. They're kind of dismissed. Um, they also don't get a lot of explanation. So their understanding of what their hormones are doing and which hormones are important, I find are often overlooked as well. Um, so they do appreciate this piece. So nutrient specific recommendations, why is this so important? As clinicians, we're always looking for ways to support our patients, right? To give them an advantage. Um, I also think that they are um, the, the patient, the couple at large is spending so much time on Dr. Google and navigating the internet to find out what they can take. What's that magic pill that's going to help them get pregnant. And whether you and I believe in magic pills or not, they certainly do. And I think we have to have a better understanding for what all these nutritional uh, supplements are potentially going to do for them and how they can incorporate them and give them the guidance that they need. Um, you also may have heard that using certain nutrients are important for egg and sperm health. And I promise you at this point in, uh, in the um, fertility world, most if not all of those couples coming to seek your help have probably also read the book, It Starts With The Egg, which spends so much time on this specific topic. And whether you agree with it or not, it's important to know where they're coming from because that's exactly what they wanna do is improve egg and sperm health. We need to have a solid foundation um, and knowledge base in that so we can really support them the best way and that we can be the ones that they rely on versus um, the books because even though there is research in, all of, in, in that book, um, it might not be appropriate for every patient. At least I actually believe it's not appropriate for every patient. And they do need customization for their specific needs. Um, so even though you have some basic understanding, when was the last time you looked at some good research to support what you do give them or maybe cause you to second guess and think about some nutrients differently? So that's what we're going to do today is really look at these nutrients as it relates to the research that supports them. So ionisetol, many of us really focus on the first one, myoionisetol, but I do think it's important to look at both myo and dechiro. 
Um, and so my own inositol folate can talk about, we, you know, methylfolate in this as well, um, which is my preference, melatonin, CoQ10, and antioxidants in general, B vitamins, and acetylcysteine, they all work together, right? So we're going to separate these, but I do want you guys to understand that they actually work to support one another and can really strengthen the effects of, uh, of each other, all these nutrients. Um, the, we're going to separate these two right here, myo and decairo. And again, we do speak quite often of just myo ionisetol. And I do think that most patients will come in talking about myo ionisetol when they, when they come in talking about ionisetol. Um, but we do need to look at both of them and both aren't going to be appropriate for everybody, but we do need to understand when it's appropriate to use one versus another. So myo ionisetol, has some insulin sensitizing, is an insulin sensitizing agent, helps reduce insulin resistance in women, improves egg quality, even mild elevations in blood sugar and insulin negatively impact fertility in all women trying to conceive. So we want to make sure that blood sugar and insulin are very much controlled. And we also know that, it, at least I can speak for in the United States, that. Um, Insulin resistance, obesity, blood sugar issues, these are big, real big issues in the population at large. So this can be in a really important nutrient to incorporate into many patients' protocols as you see fit. It can, you can also find it in some, sometimes where it's paired up with d -Cairo, and d -Cairo improves insulin sensitivity as well. Uh, helps to improve ovulation um, and serum androgen levels specifically. So that is a key differentiator between myo and d -Cairo. But uh, the research actually does show that the ratio, when you combine them, that you want the ratio of myo inositol to d -Cairo to be 40 to 1. And that's really what you're looking for. Um, it's actually difficult to find just d -Cairo on its own, quite frankly. Um, and with that research, you don't really want to prescribe it so much on its own. You'd rather find it in combination with myo-inositol. CoQ10. So um, CoQ10, ubiquinone in this specific case, uh, is an antioxidant, a power, powerful antioxidant. I imagine that many of you already incorporate this into your protocols. Helps with cellular energy production supports healthy ovarian reserve, and reduces the effects of reproductive aging. This is, to me, is a, is a key nutrient that should be in most, if not all, um, couples' protocols. Um, you'll see in, in a future slide when I go over male fertility, I also incorporate it there. And this is something that's really important. We want to basically reverse the aging process um, and start to support healthy cellular function and energy. And this is a key nutrient that can do that um, and support ovarian reserve as well. So this in my book is uh, potentially at the top of the list when you're talking about uh, nutrients to incorporate. Um, CoQ10, so impaired mitochondrial performance created by suboptimal CoQ10 availability can drive age associated oocyte deficits. So we can already see that when mitochondrial function is impaired, we, the, um, we have a uh, decrease in oocyte health, right? And so we, don't, we want to support follicular health um, and we want that, that to be optimized. And so CoQ10 can really do that um, dramatically, which is a, again, another reason why we want this at the top of those or why I think of it as a key nutrient that I want at the top of the list of uh, supplements that I'm gonna be prescribing or recommending. Melatonin. Now, melatonin is often, so I think it gets a, a bad rap in one sense, and I think the, um, the other piece of this is that we only typically think of it in one way. Melatonin is 95 to 98% of the time thought of only for sleep issues. If you are traveling, you're having difficulty sleeping, this is where we think of melatonin. And yes, obviously it is a key nutrient for that, right? But 
Uh, melatonin for women supports intracellular melatonin concentrations and reduces, uh, sorry, <laughs> and reduces intrafollicular, sorry, let's start that over. Melatonin for women supports intrafollicular melatonin concentrations and reduces intrafollicular oxidative damage and elevates fertilization. So this statement should really get you to start to think about melatonin a bit differently. I tell you that for sure for, for myself, it, it has, right? Um, I always used to just think of this as a sleep support. And if patients didn't have sleep issues, then I was not thinking of using melatonin. Now, um, this this research really got me to think differently about melatonin because it protects um, oocytes from free radical damage. So it's basically acting as <clears throat> a powerful antioxidant, right? Now, how many of you really thought of melatonin as a powerful antioxidant? I know for myself, I was not in that camp. Um, so I imagine most of you are, are, are the same, that you thought of it primarily for sleep. Obviously, it can be used for that, and it's a bonus if we get a patient who needs sleep support and needs a good antioxidant to support um, uh, follicular health, well, then melatonin's a no-brainer, but I also think it should be thought of um, in addition to, the, you know, outside of that um, uh, sleep issue as well, which I think most, most of us ignore or forget about. <clears throat> so antioxidants. Antioxidants are key, and we'll get into a couple of them that I really like, but first and foremost, antioxidant supplementation may be effective in controlling the production of ROS, which is reactive oxygen species, and continues to be explored as a potential strategy to support reproductive function and fertility. We often think of antioxidants um, when we are thinking about regulating and supporting egg health. Um, and this is no different here. We talked about it in the last slide about melatonin, right? And so let's get into some other antioxidants. The two big ones that I think are key factors to incorporate into a protocol that you're developing for a couple would be grapeseed extract and resveratrol. So grapeseed extract is an antioxidant, as we've just mentioned, and it's effective against fat-soluble and water soluble free radicals. So this helps on both sides, fat and water soluble, which is great um, because you can have one nutrient that can help you on both sides of it versus just uh, putting together multiple nutrients for that. Uh, resveratrol, transresveratrol in this case, protects cells from oxidative damage as well, protects mitochondrial function. We've heard that a couple of times, right? From some of the other uh, nutrients that we've mentioned, enhances telomere activity, which is also really important. Um, animal studies show potential ability to, uh, to favorably impact both egg quality and quantity with resveratrol. Now, I think most of us don't think about using or haven't in the past thought about using resveratrol when we're working with our fertility patients. We've thought about different antioxidants. Hopefully this this gets you to start to think about incorporating resveratrol a little bit differently um, and that you might put this above some other antioxidants you've been using because of these uh, favorable research studies that have, been, um, that have been done using that. Now, you can often find both grapeseed extract and transresveratrol combined together when you're looking at uh, supplement support. Um, but if you wanted to isolate them, you can, and this is where you would start to see uh, those, or this is how you would start to see those uh, benefits as well. NAC and glutathione. This is one of my favorites. I, I feel like I've said that a couple times because I like these all for different reasons, but I do really like uh, NAC quite a bit. Um, obviously it's an antioxidant because we're talking about it in this antioxidant category, but it's also, a precursor to glutathione, and glutathione is not metabolized well uh, through the small intestine. So I know glutathione tends to get most of the top billing when you're when you are reading um, and uh, research and thinking about incorporating um, different antioxidants. And I love glutathione as well, but uh, NAC is wonderful because one, it's a precursor to glutathione. It's also a key nutrient um, and cofactor for so many other uh, reproductive uh, 
um, issues and support for other reproductive conditions. So it's really a nice one to start with um, and then potentially add on glutathione periodically here and there. Uh, NAC is more likely to raise glutathione levels and glutathione supports healthy detoxification, including excessive hormone production, um, and NAC supports ovulation. So this is, it does so many things. Um, one of the ways that I determine when I need to use glutathione over NAC, or maybe I decide to combine both of them, is um, I often use a uh, test called the Dutch test. Um, it's a dried urine hormone panel. And on page one, two, on page three of that report, they, um, when we're talking about estrogen metabolism and estrogen production and levels, there is a line um, on that report that shows you if, if they're using and able to methylate and metabolize um, estrogen properly or that specific type of estrogen. Um, and also, if it's not working properly, you can see that glutathione is a key resource in that process. And so you would, it's, a, it's an easy way to start to know when you want to incorporate glutathione specifically. Um, so when, when I see that, I will incorporate both NAC and glutathione, but I will routinely incorporate NAC on its own because of its value in so many ways. And obviously here, that precursor piece to, to glutathione is very, very important. Um, and we all wanna support detoxification so that hormones are regulated and balanced. We talked about that earlier on so that we can have a regular cycle. Um, and uh, another bonus, as I already mentioned, is that NAC supports ovulation. So we, we that goes back to when, wanting to have a regular cycle, regular ovulation, regular menstruation, NAC can have profound effects there as well. ALA, alpha, li alpha li lipoic acid, acts as a water-soluble and fat-soluble antioxidant. Lab studies show it can support egg maturation and egg viability, which is also good. I often um, don't use ALA on its own. I will um, have it as part of a blend of nutrients that I incorporate together um, because it's just easier for me versus giving all these little uh, pieces, which I'll get into in just a little bit. But, um, but I do like ALA, I think it's very important. Um, I just don't often give it on its own. So exactly what I was just talking about is, how should you approach incorporating these nutrients? You know, we've got specific ingredients, like we just mentioned these key nutrients uh, versus multi-ingredient supplement approach. Um, and, there's no right answer specifically for patients. I think there's going to come, uh, I, I think each patient has to be looked at differently and uniquely, but also I think it comes down to your preference as a practitioner. How do you want to approach this for patients? How do you think it's best for them, for their specific needs in their specific situation? For some patients, it's going to make more sense to pick out the key nutrients you want to give them that we just mentioned and put those together maybe with Chinese herbs or something else that you're doing because that works out better for what your long-term approach is. For others, it might be better suited to actually put find that multi-ingredient supplement that you can blend all, to, that has everything already blended together because it's gonna be easier for you, easier for the patient. You know, when I have my difficult patients who are like, I can't take that many supplements, I tend to look for just one versus all these different things because it's, it's confusing to them, it's overwhelming. And so that's one of the different ways that you can decide how you're gonna go about it. The other piece to this is, uh, is a multivitamin support helpful in addition to the specific ingredients like myo, inositol, CoQ10, and, and all the others that we mentioned. So by this, I mean, can you, are you gonna look for a multi-ingredient supplement that just has those key ones that you're looking for? So if you're looking for CoQ10, Ionisetol, uh, both Myo and D Cairo, and let's say one of those anti those other antioxidants. Are you going to look for something that just has those four things in it, or are you maybe going to find something that's a little bit more comprehensive? It has all their basic key vitamin uh, nutrients, like so it's going to act like a, as their multivitamin, and in addition to that, have all these key nutrients um, 
to support their uh, reproductive needs. So again, this comes down to preference, patient, and condition. Um, and I think it's going to vary from person to person, clinic to clinic, and patient to patient. But those are options, which is why I put that out there. One of my favorites is FH Pro for Women um, by Fairhaven Health um, because they don't hide their dosages in their proprietary blend. So you know exactly what the patients will be receiving, which I really appreciate. Um, most, if not all of the other uh, multi-nutrient um, supplements and uh, fertility support vitamins that I have seen don't give me the exact dosages of the uh, nutrients. So it just says proprietary blend um, and it you know, gives just give me a general number which is not great for me because I want to know exactly the new, the dosages and amounts that each one of my, uh, that my patients are getting for each one of those specific nutrients, because I'm picky. I might want one. Uh, I want, I might want more of one and less of another. Um, and so quite frankly, until I found FH pro, I was kind of piecemealing it together. They made it much easier for me as well. Um, it's, it also happens to be a full multivitamin along with the ingredients targeted for reproductive health. Um, and I know that there's a lot of fertility supplements out there. Um, I would just encourage all of you to look at when you're looking at multi-ingredient supplements, first of all, look at what those multi-ingredients are to make sure you're comparing apples to apples, but also make sure that you are, that you can see all the dosages for every nutrient. Um, and which again, which is why I really like FH Pro for that reason, because I can see exactly what I'm getting and there's, they don't have their proprietary formulas put together. So now moving on for uh, cervical mucus and vaginal dryness. Um, this is a, a, a key thing for me when I talk about with patients. Patients always bring up their cervical mucus. Um, obviously, if they have vaginal dryness, it's uncomfortable. Um, uh, intercourse is painful. Um, it's not fun for them anymore. So one, we need healthy cervical mucus so that we can create a proper healthy environment, right? So that the sperm can get to where they need to go um, more easily and in a healthy, uh, healthy vaginal canal. But also you want sex to be fun. I mean, I want sex to be fun for my patients. I don't want them to be um, hating it. I don't want them to be dreading it. And the only time that they have intercourse is around ovulation for that one time where they got a positive OPK. I want this to be, uh, I want intercourse to happen more fluidly for them, more easily and with less concern. So we need to have a healthy and safe vaginal environment to make the journey, obviously for the sperm as easy and safe as possible. And what are the main issues and why? Well, vaginal dryness, as I mentioned, is a key one. We need to have healthy cervical mucus so that cervical mucus is becoming nice and egg white um, around, right at ovulation um, and maintains that for enough days. Um, and some of the ways that I determine this is also going back to that hormone testing, right? I want to understand if they're having... Uh, an issue with their cervical mucus and with vaginal dryness, I want to get a better understanding for why that's happening. And so I often incorporate hormone testing here as well. Hopefully I've already had it tested um, when I'm looking at the bigger picture, but if I haven't, then I'll definitely go out of my way to have that tested again and make sure that I understand what's going on with their estrogen levels and progesterone and testosterone so that I know how to adjust things um, for their specific needs. So Some key nutrients that can be really important and supportive to create a healthy cervical mucus environment is uh, NAC. We talked about NAC before when we were talking about uh, egg quality. And you could use NAC in so many ways, as I mentioned, here's another one. Studies find that it softens cervical mucus and makes it easier for the sperm to get to the egg. I rarely, rarely, rarely ever see anyone ever mention this uh, piece of information in this study, but it is important and valuable and can make a big difference. I also like to incorporate evening primrose oil, EPO, um, in the follicular phase of a woman's cycle to help with healthy and normal uh, cervical mucus. And I love to incorporate Chinese herbs. For me, this is a big one as well when we want to address cervical mucus 
um, and vaginal dryness. Um, this, this is where I might not actually give a patient a choice if they, if they allow me that, um, where I might try to actually incorporate all three. And then uh, on top of that, um, so I do these three because I want to change the cervical mucus for them physically, right? I want their body to start to create a healthy, healthy cervical mucus at the right time of their cycle and to minimize any vaginal dryness throughout their menstrual cycle. So these I will start to incorporate. In addition to that, I will often incorporate a lubricant as well because I need a bridge to get from uh, coming in and complaining about cervical mucus and vaginal dryness and I need some time to be able to make those changes. And so I'll have a bridge to get there and that's where the lubricants come in. Um, obviously patients cannot use just any lubricant. Um, it's really important that they are aware of that because you'll hear them using all sorts of things when it comes to uh, lubricants. Lubricants um, should be cleared as fertility friendly lubricants. This is actually a uh, medical device um, and has a class two medical device grading when you're talking about lubricants. Um, there are not many lubricants that are cleared in this way um, as being fertility friendly. And what this means is that they don't impact sperm parameters. It doesn't affect negatively any of the sperm parameters that we'll talk about in just a minute. Um, the other key thing that I look, about, look for is that it doesn't have any toxins. I don't want them to have any parabens in the lubricant. Um, our patients are already exposed to enough junk, right? So we wanna minimize that. And um, I don't want any of those uh, um, coating oils. Um, so I do prefer that they're water-based lubricants. Coating oils, like if you think about someone who, and I've had patients say this all the time, using coconut oil as a lubricant. Um, that can be a problem because of the oil itself. It's so coating, it does it, it makes it more difficult potentially for the sperm to get to where it wants to go. Um, so we want to have uh, sperm, we want to have fertility friendly, doesn't affect sperm parameters, no parabens or toxins, uh, no coating oils, and pH balance to match fertile mucus. There are not many of those. Um, actually, I think there's only three, may, possibly only four that are cleared um, as medical devices to be used in this way. And my preferred one is Baby Dance because it's the only one um, that I'm aware of that does not have parabens, uh, those toxins, right? So this is the one that I uh, prefer to use and recommend. Um, I sometimes have a bunch of samples in my office that I'll actually give out to patients and then I'll just send them uh, back to Fairhaven for, uh, for purchasing um, and keep it easy uh, in my office so I don't have to stack, uh, stock it. Um, but this is my favorite one to use in conjunction with those other nutrients because those other nutrients will help us get, um, uh, make the uh, physiological changes we need to so that their body can start to create and have healthy cervical mucus and reduce that vaginal dryness, have more moisture. And this helps as a bridge, especially when they're trying to conceive so it becomes easier, less painful, less uncomfortable for them. All right, so common issues with, with uh, male patients, right? Sperm health, the parameters such as uh, um, as count decline with age, in, uh, also they're also impacted by the environmental toxins. And the key areas that we wanna focus on are sperm count, motility, and uh, morphology. So we do know that oxidative stress has a negative impact on sperm health parameters, again, which includes uh, count, motility, and DNA integrity, which is part of that morphology piece. Um, and as I mentioned, when we were just talking about um, lubricants, we don't want that lubricant. Sperm have a hard enough time doing their job without any additional barriers, right? So we don't wanna create any additional work for them to do. That's why that lubricant is so important if it's needed because it creates a healthy environment and a safe environment for the sperm to get to where they need to go without impacting any of these parameters. But I also will coach my patients on lifestyle changes. Exercise is key here. Diet is essential and temperature of the body and the scrotum are also key pieces here that can impact all of these parameters. So if you're not talking to your patients about exercise, if you're not talking to your patients about having a good diet, and if you're not talking about keeping that area nice and cool, 
then you've got some work to do and they've got some work to do, right? So um, this talk is specifically on nutrients, which I'll get into, but I didn't want to ignore these pieces because this will make um, your life a lot easier and make the changes happen more easily for them. Now, they might not like to make some of these changes because they are difficult to make, but they definitely can have some profound changes for patients. So nutrition, high inflammatory fat intake, heavy caffeine, high red meat intake, low veggies and fruit intake, and also lifestyle, low physical activity, high stress, high scrotal uh, temperatures create more oxidative stress, okay? They, which damages the sperm DNA and impairs count motility and morphology. These variables alone, if you just spend time with your patient addressing diet and lifestyle, can have huge changes for the male partner in, in uh, reproductive health, right? So if you're not spending time here and they hate it, they hate changing their diet, they hate it, but, we talk, but I talk about it so often with them because it's so important. We wanna reduce the inflammation, the alcohol intake, which I didn't list here, <clears throat> Caffeine, have healthy diet, increase um, physical activity. We know that increased physical activity will absolutely help their, um, their uh, quality of their sperm, reducing stress, and uh, obviously lowering that temperature so we're not heating up and burning up the sperm. So if you do nothing else with your patients, this can have profound effects. But obviously, I think we can get those effects a little bit faster, a little bit easier, and hopefully with greater results if we incorporate some nutrition nutrients. So antioxidants, which are well studied and have great results. We're going to talk about a few of them, but I want to go over some of these, uh, re some of this research first. So antioxidants play an important role in protecting semen from ROS, which we talked about before, oxidative stress essentially, and can improve basic sperm parameters like count motility and morphology. Also, they will help with DNA integrity, right? Results suggest that antioxidant treatment improves sperm quality, not only in terms of key seminal parameters, but basal DNA damage as well. And beneficial impacts of antioxidants on reproductive health. So we know that antioxidants have a great effect. We talked about them and their benefit in uh, female fertility. And now we're gonna talk about these in terms of male fertility. So uh, N-acetyl-L-cysteine, preventing cells from free radical damage, right? Um, Grapeseed extract, we talked about this one before, is a powerful antioxidant, um, has rejuvenation effects um, and rejuvenation effects of other antioxidants. So it makes the other antioxidants stronger um, and is in itself is a powerful antioxidant. And then lycopene, uh, supporting sperm quality, including count and viability. Um, I think we often uh, ignore lycopene when we're talking about male fertility, um, but I do think it's an important one. And grapeseed extract, look, we talked about it before. We can see its importance again. This is an easy one to uh, incorporate. So key basic nutrients also that are going to be important for male fertility. Folate, Zinc and vitamin E can support healthy sperm concentration and motility. Um, sometimes these get ignored for the bigger ones, right? We tend to ignore some of these smaller, uh, more common, if you will, nutrients. And um, because we're thinking about the, the bigger ones that are talked about, they get more notoriety, but these shouldn't be ignored because these also have profound effects. And poor zinc nutrition may be an important risk factor for low quality of sperm as well. Um, and so we do need to address that. CoQ10. So CoQ10 increases both ubiquinone and ubiquinol levels in semen, um, which is going to help with quality. And antioxidant, it's an antioxidant that protects sperm cells. Studies show the more CoQ10 available in seminal fluid, the higher sperm count. That's reason enough to take it. And I, re um, I really like to focus on sperm count quite a bit because all the other numbers when you're talking about um, sperm quality are percentages based on count. So if we can improve count, even if we can't improve the other percentages, which we typically can, um, we're gonna see improved numbers anyway. 
Also, we have carnitine and arginine. Um, carnitine is a vitamin-like compound that helps transport fatty acid into the my mitochondria where they can be burned for energy. It helps uh, sperm cells create energy needed for motility, um, seems to prevent cellular death, although mechanisms are unclear and could act as an antioxidant. It increases, in, it, sorry, it increases seminal volume and motility, which is a, a a uh, key one. I often think of carnitine for motility in this case. And then arginine is an amino acid necessary for sperm production. It's a precursor for nitric oxide, which, which is required for sperm motility and erectile function. I also often think of uh, arginine for morphology. So why I think of FH Pro specifically, FH Pro for men specifically, when I am thinking about a male fertility supplement is it has the specific ingredients that I just mentioned in the right dosages that I like, <clears throat> excuse me, from uh, Fairhaven, which I really trust as a company. Um, it's easy for them to take because I don't have to typically give them anything else. I can give them this one supplement and for men, that's really important because they, they want to keep things easy and straightforward. Um, and I can just say, just take this. This is pretty much all you need to get the results. In addition, they have some wonderful research around this. And this is this product specifically, and this study that I'm showing you right now is exactly how I started um, incorporating the FH Pro products into my clinic with my patients. Because when I saw this research study, um, it really impressed me. And if there is a product that can have these sorts of, a, of an effect, this sort of an effect on male fertility and parameters, um, and I can just give one thing, then not only is it making my life easier, but my patients are going to be happier because they just have to take one thing and think about one thing. So we can see that before the treatment, the sperm count um, was uh, 22 and it, uh, the percent change after the percent change was 37%. Motility, the percent change was 101%. Normal morphology improved by 39%. DNA fragmentation, which you want a lower number with DNA fragmentation. So we want this number to go down, improved to 17%. And then oxidative reduction potential also was reduced by 39%. This, these are huge, um, uh, benefits for patients, right? This is a big deal when you're talking about male fertility to your uh, male couple, to your uh, male patients in couples. But this specific uh, research study that was done at the Cleveland Clinic um, really stuck out for me. Okay, so researchers sought sought to evaluate the impact of antioxidant supplements on the sperm proteome of men with suboptimal sperm health. In this prospective study, men were given FH Pro for men, a combination antioxidant dietary supplement for 180 days. The results showed that supplementation with FH Pro for men resulted in increased expression of sperm proteins associated with spermatogenesis, maturation of sperm, sperm binding function, and fertilization process, suggesting a possible explanation for the well-established benefits of antioxidant supplementation on sperm health. So um, this is key. The one thing that I often um, might add to this, especially with my patients who need a little bit more um, support when it comes to morphology, is I might add some additional L-arginine. The dosage in FH Pro is 500, and I typically like to be around 1500 or so to 2000. But for me, if I just have to add in that and on occasion, um, it's it's not a big deal, and this is much easier of a product for someone to take versus piecemealing it together, which is exactly what I used to do. Um, and so I was introduced to uh, Fairhaven with this specific product first, and then I started incorporating the other FH Pros and Baby Dance afterwards. So as Lauren said in the beginning, and then we'll take some questions. Um, I'll turn off the the presentation or, or the share and um, I'll come to you with just my face and answer those questions, is that uh, Fairhaven um, has an offer for all of you. It is on that page that Lauren had mentioned, but it's also 20% off for wholesale orders, either new or existing com com customers through July 15th. Uh, you just need to use that healthy um, 
uh, coupon code there. Um, they're great to work with easy. If you want to just send patients to their, if you don't want to stock anything and you just want to send patients to their um, website to get it on their own, they also have a referral program as well. And you can use that URL fairhavenhealth.com forward slash referral dash program to uh, see all the information that you need um, to start incorporating it into your practice. So I'm gonna stop sharing. Lauren, are there questions that have come up? Yeah, we'll do some questions. And I wanna again, thank Mark for putting this together. And I wanna thank Fairhaven for sharing this. So we'll take a few questions. Just a reminder, the replay will be on the healthyseminars.com forward slash Fairhaven. And um, you, so this is where the replay will be. And then if you're looking for the information about Fairhaven, how to access the, um, the handouts, then come here and there's information for the special offer at the bottom as well. So that's where you'll go for that. Just wanted to remind you of that. Um, I'm glad you talked about the men because, you know, it takes two to make a baby and so much focus is always on the woman, even when it's male factor for fertility. Right. And it's, uh, you know, again, why the, the uh, FH pro for men is, is so great is we have a thing, a program in our clinic, we call it KISS, keep it simple for your stud, KISS, right? <laughs> we basically wanted to make it simple for the guys. If they have to open up five bottles, they won't do it quite often. They won't. And so um, this was nice because of what Fairhaven has done is putting it all together, um, then it just makes it easier for the guy. This is their bottle. And so um, it's a nice- Yeah, bottle. Lauren, on that note, I should say, you know, um, the dosage for the FH Pro for men is six cap capsules per day. So some men might balk a little bit at that. Um, but I often tell them, you're either going to take these six or I'm going to give you 10 to 12 in combined, you know, five or six other products. So which one makes more sense to you? Which, which do you prefer? But we've got to get you those nutrients either way, <laughs> right? So how do you want to take it? This to me is a no brainer. It's, it's much simpler, much easier for them. It reminds me of a couple I worked with and the man was a little bit resistant because he said, well, I, you know, I don't want to pay for all these supplements and take these pills. And, um, I said, have you checked to see how much ICSI cost? <laughs> and he said, I'm going to take these pills. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. It's a little bit easier. And, and, the, and your spouse doesn't have to go through all those hormones injections. Now, obviously, sometimes they need to do the IVF. But as you know, sometimes correcting male fertility and so much more research has shown that um, IVF failure, unexplained fertility and early pregnancy loss, they're contributing more and more to the guy. So um, men are easy to treat if they come in and if they take your supplements, but men are making new sperm. It was just good to hear you talk about the men because so often people don't. And I have to tell you a quick story about the NAC. I, you remember, do you remember that movie, My Big Fat Greek Wedding? Yeah. And the old guy, Windex everything. NAC is my Windex. I use it. <laughs> <laughs> it works for everything. I give everybody an AC for because the inflammation, you know, it's good. For it works people. great. Yeah, just I so use it all the time. And as you just mentioned that movie, I was thinking to myself, he's going to say it's your, it's his Windex. It's my Windex. When people go, why do you give NAC? No matter what, come I come in for. You tell me take NAC. I go, it's my Windex. Mm. <laughs> That's great. I take it. If you're going to do a little bit of extra drinking, then build up your uh, NAC reserves. In your body, and again, it's the precursor to glutathione. Yeah. All right, a couple of questions here. Now, there's a lot of questions about dosage, and we don't have exact time for this. Um, but if you're somebody from the public, then talk to your healthcare provider, obviously, about dosaging. And a lot of the research that Mark has shared, um, you can look at the research and see what the dosaging is. Um, and I know Ethan's here. Ethan, there's a, where can people get Fairhaven products, by the way? Um, I know it's available in Canada, the United States. You can get that. Some people asked about New Zealand, Australia, and the UK. Is there are they available there? Sure. Yeah. I mean, we're we we're pretty all across the US and Canada and a number of countries. Some countries we just can't get into. New Zealand is one of them. But um, for I don't know how they do it, but there's a company called iHerb that seems to be able to get our products into every single country around the globe. So <laughs> you, you should check with them. They do carry FH Pro and Baby Dance and pretty much all of our products. I know in the UK. Uh, we work with the National Fertility Society, a woman named Sandra Bateman, um, and she has our products there. And then we're on Amazon UK as well. Perfect. Thank you for that. Yeah. You um, 
For L-arginine, there's a question about uh, like herpes. Do you screen patients? Because some people, there's that concern that the herpes will feed off of the L-arginine. Do you um, have a concern about that or you give it to anybody? Well, so, I mean, there is a concern for that, right? Um, the the L-arginine is in, in the products we're discussing here through Fairhaven is just in the FH Pro for men. Um, and... Um, it's at a lower dose that 500 doesn't concern me too much in that regard, but everybody's sensitivity is a little bit different. Um, the, but if they have, if they do have um, herpes and we're concerned about an outbreak, you do have to consider that. And, you know, you might have to make adjustments in some way. There was a question about um, what's your thoughts with um, IVF clinics or IVF IUIs taking um, these supplements is, um, and I think this comes with, some clinics historically were uncomfortable mm-hmm. with Chinese herbs during an IVF cycle. Um, do you have any, and I'll share from my clinical experience here as well in Vancouver at Acubalance, but do you have any pushback from IVF clinics about their patients taking any of these supplements during an IVF? No, um, I, I don't. Um, I will stop them right before transfer. You know, well, <clears throat> You know, we can get into the conversation about, you know, fresh or frozen and when you stop it. But um, but I won't have them take it from transfer on. Um, I'll switch them to a prenatal at that point. Um, in this case, specifically FH Pro for women, um, because it's not meant to be taken um, once a woman's pregnant. So, we'll, you know, you will switch to uh, a, just a, a prenatal in that in that case. But um, for men, I'll keep them on it as long as I as long as I can keep them on it. I don't have an issue with that. Um, and for women, I just take it up until uh, retrieval. And once they're done retrieving, then we can stop and switch. In Vancouver, um, as of 2020, just so you know, back in the day, I've been in practice since 2000, they used to make patients go off of CoQ10 back in the day, around 2000, 2002. Now the clinics sell melatonin, CoQ10, yep. all, the, the patients are all on it, the male supplements. So they're all uh, prescribing it in Vancouver, anyhow, Canada. Most of the IVF clinics are putting the male and female patients on the supplements that we're talking about here today as well. So, yeah, you know, Lauren, on that point, I should, I should mention, you know, exactly, that's exactly the case. Most IVF clinics are recommending a slew of supplements. Most of the things that they're supplement, that they're recommending are actually the nutrients that are found in the FH Pro product. So that makes it easier for them. Um, and two, if they're, if they're often recommending a specific uh, supplement that they prefer over FH Pro in this case, I'm telling you, I've looked at, I've compared ingredients and labels of all of them. This is how I ended up with FH Pro. Right. Okay, Cause I think it's a more comprehensive, much better balanced, and it again has the ing- has the nutrients that I'm looking for in the right dosages. So, and, and I know our, our our patients really like the baby dance. I like the name by the way, <laughs> uh, but they they like it because if the people having such regular intercourse around their fertile window, um, yeah. and as you know, the spontaneity, the enjoyment is not always there. Although we are encouraging to be in- enjoyment, and uh, for two reasons, it makes the intercourse much more pleasurable. Um, but B is it actually helps with bringing the sperm to to the to the uh, to the egg, right? So that's really yeah. good. Um, do you use the Dutch test to help you decide whether you want to use melatonin or not in women trying to conceive? Um, y- yes, it, it, that's not the only. I won't run a Dutch test just for that. I should be clear. I'll typically run it because I want more information. But as one of the areas that I'm evaluating to decide if I want to. Um, incorporate melatonin, yes, I will look at mel- uh, the melatonin levels. And that's a perfect example. I had a patient who I just read uh, her results and her her melatonin was ridiculously high. And so in my mind, I was sure she was taking melatonin because that's typically when you see it. Mm-hmm. And um, But I, I just figured she hadn't told me because I didn't have it documented anywhere. And when I asked her, she said, no, she's not taking it. I was like, okay, we're going to have to figure this out. So in her case, I wouldn't incorporate melatonin. Great. Um, somebody asked, baby dance is their lubricant. So it's the actual name of a lubricant. Um, so it's a, it's a, a, um, a lubricant for intercourse. Um, also how patients will refer to intercourse 
as baby dancing. So. Right. Yeah. So it's just a lubricant. Um, and uh, I think that, uh, melatonin, some was asking about dosage. I think the early research, what was it? Three milligrams was what they did for the fertility. Was that? Yeah. Of- I don't like to go that high personally if I don't have to. If I, So I should be clear. If I'm not, if I'm giving it separately um, out of the FH Pro product, then I won't go that high. If I'm giving it in, you know, in conjunction, then yeah, it's, it's, it's fine, but I won't go over. I've had some, some patients at like 10 and I won't do 10. Okay. That, that's too high. Perfect. Um, I want to thank everybody for their questions today. Again, um, if you want to get the handouts um, for this talk, because I know Mark referenced a few studies, which will be of interest, um, then um, you can email uh, Fairhaven directly um, and that email is wholesale at Fairhaven Health. I keep calling them Fairhaven, but it's fairhavenhealth.ca. Uh, sorry, that would be Canada.com. Um, wholesale at fairhavenhealth.com. Um, and also you can just go to their website, um, fairhavenhealth.com uh, too, if you forget that email and, and, and contact them. They'll tell you, let them know if you've been on the webinar, they may have a special deal for you. There's some students on here. Um, contact them because you're asking about setting up an account if you're a student right now. So you can check with them as well. And um, um, I know um, our patients like their their products. And for us, we got introduced to you guys through the, the lubricant and the LH strips and the pregnancy test strips. That was the first introduction we had. And then um, I want to thank Fairhaven Health because they've been coming to the Integrated Fertility Symposium for years. And they're always making um, these products um, that... Um, are, um, you know, we, we like in Chinese medicine, if you can find one thing that can treat many things. So rather than having to take a CoQ10 bottle and this bottle and this bottle, it's nice when you can get a combination and they do a nice dosage of that. Um, and Mark, it's good to see that we, we have a lot of similar thinking around our Windex, the NAC. Now I know there's a lot of Americans on here, so I got to say this disclaimer, I'm not saying to use Windex for your fertility. <laughs> <laughs> okay i said it's like my windex but i'm not saying use windex i use nac <laughs> just because we got some americans on here we do have to make that very clear that's funny <laughs> fair haven health does not sell windex for fertility <laughs> okay. no most other things though you know you can get your home pregnancy tests and all those other things there as well yeah. So again, thank you guys for your questions. Check out healthyseminars.com forward slash resources to see what we have going on. And then if you go to the June 22nd date, um, if you're looking for this, I want to see the replay or I want to see the link to get to Fairhaven or what was their special they had for us if, from the resource page. If you go to the June date calendar and go to June 22nd, click on that and that'll take you to the replay page and you'll see there's information on Fairhaven there. There's information on Dr. Mark Squire as well. Thank you.